All right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you who are following on my YouTube channel, welcome back. And for those of you who just read my history blog, welcome for the first time to one of my videos. Today, I want to talk about comic books, I want to talk about pirates, and I want to talk about trends in historical adventure fiction. Um, I've spoken before on the blog about my lifelong love of comics, uh, and today I wanted to give some examples of historical comics and then talk about one specifically that I've been very excited about both because I like the subject and because uh, I have kind of a personal connection to it. Um, so let's start. Different types of historical comics. Well, so take, for instance, Larry Gonick's Cartoon History of the Universe. It is, uh, I think, now in three volumes, or, or maybe even four. This is the third. This is the first one, but I have up to the third. I should check out and see if there are any ones. Um, it's... My parents got these for me when I was young. They knew I liked uh, comics, and they thought, you know, some educational comics would be good for me. Um, and I think they were. Uh... This is, um, this is the Ancient History one, and it's got good stuff um, all the way up to uh, the death of Alexander the Great. They're really, they're funny, they're informative, they're uh, well-written and drawn. I really like them. I've talked about them on the blog before, so. Comics as a teaching tool. That's one. All right, comics as a form of historical fiction, right? History as... The, uh, the inspiration for a fictional story. This is a particularly good example of the genre. This is Age of Bronze by Eric Shanimer, which is backed up by very, very detailed archaeological research. It's kind of an attempt to set the story of the Trojan War within an archaeologically plausible uh, context, but at the same time, including all the different things that you would expect from that story. Um, you know, and in even including things like Troilus and Cressida. You know, so it's, it's, it's very, very thorough. I, I think it's really good. Um, I think my only problem with it is that it doesn't come out as frequently as I would like. So Age of Bronze by Eric Shanower, um, this big historical epic, uh, backed up with a lot of research. Uh, I I'm a big fan of this book. Then there are comics which are about the practice of doing history or archaeology. So for instance, this is Archaeological Oddities, which is just about different, um, uh, archaeological artifacts. So, so for instance... Uh, here's the Star Car Antler Frontlet, which is, a, uh, I think, here in Cambridge, in the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. Um, uh, it's, uh, anyway, yeah, um, this is about archaeological objects. Um, there's also things like Trowel Tunes, which is uh, about the history of archaeology. And I'll, I'll put links to all this stuff down in the show notes. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is something that my connection to starts when I was a kid. Um, you know, when I was when I was younger, I lived, as I've said before, in Palo Alto, California, and there I used to take these art classes. Um, you know, I, I loved cartooning, and there was a, a cartoony, like a like a comic focused art class. And again, I think you know, my parents signed my brother and me up for these classes. You know, hoping that we would then turn our our love for comics to something creative. My brother was always the more artistic of the two of us, but these classes, you know, they were after school or on weekends or whatever, and they were taught by this guy named Richard Becker. Now, it was only later when I started to learn more about kind of the, you know, as a gamer, I'm a big Glorantophile, and it turned out that Rich Becker had been involved in that scene very early on. In fact, um, if you know what it is, he designed the Chaosium logo. I mean, I guess he designed it even if you don't know what it is, but you would care if you knew. So Richard Becker was the guy who taught these classes. He's an illustrator and a cartoonist. Um, and uh, at the time, this must be around that time or just slightly earlier, he was doing this comic. This is Escape Velocity, which is a science fiction anthology story in which he has a, a short piece featuring his character, Fragiana, Queen of the Star Pirates. Um, and he did this cover painting as well. So as you can see from the painting and the title of the, uh, the Becker piece, it's kind of a retro 30s-y, you know ray guns and rocket ships, sort of a sci-fi uh, adventure story. And uh, it's a lot of fun, I think. Uh, particularly, you know, it's, it's this, about this crew of space pirates who aren't necessarily terribly good at space piracy, except for their leader. So you sort of this heroic character, the queen of the space pirates, or star pirates, possibly, and then her sort of bumbling crew of uh, of, of misfits that, that follow her around. Um, now... I think I, I definitely had this comic when I was younger, but, you know, most of my my collection, our collection, a big pile, I got rid of at one point or another, or my mother gave away. Um, uh, but, you know, I didn't, I didn't particularly keep track. But then last year, or actually earlier this year, I was back in the Bay Area, and I went to 
uh, Comics Experience, which is a comic book shop on Divisadero Street in San Francisco, and lo and behold, I found this copy of Escape Velocity number one, um, and uh, and I snapped it out because you know this is a cool, like you know I knew this 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 artist and uh, I really enjoyed those glasses and I had a lot of fond memories of them and all the different you know he would show us how to draw all these different characters and uh, that's where I learned how to do uh, Zipatone and stuff like that you know not that I put those skills to use particularly as you'll know if you've seen um, Robot Face Smith History Bastard my intermittent comic feature here on the blog. Um, but anyway, Richard Becker. So I mentioned Richard Becker and his work to a friend of mine, and then it was my birthday a few weeks ago, and she got me this, which is a complete collection of a comic called Bloodthirsty Pirate Tales, um, which is a series of pirate uh, adventure stories mostly drawn and partly written by Richard Becker. And like Escape Velocity, um, it's a little independent black and white comic, uh, and it was an anthology book. It, so each issue started out with part of a serialized biography of Blackbeard. So here's issue number seven has the Battle of Ocracoke Inlet. Now, as you can tell, from there are eight issues in total. So uh, the and obviously the Battle of Ocracoke Inlet is the end of the story of Blackbeard. So the next one's about Steed Bonnet, who is sort of an associated act, right? Like the the, the Killabees. Um, of the piracy world. But anyway, yeah, and as you can see, so like I said, they're black and white, and it's a little bit more in the style of a kind of, um, you know, I, I think of it as having an influence of um, uh, newspaper adventure strips, right? Like um, yeah, Captain Easy or, or whatever. Um, and, uh, and this cover looks, you know, he has all these painted covers, and they, they look a bit... Um, sort of ad adventure story-ish as well, like, um, uh, it's a bit Treasure Island. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, uh, this is, uh, Bloodthirsty Pile Tales, and like I said, the first, the first part is this Blackbeard story, but then, um, there are a bunch of other stories, some of which are drawn by Becker, some of which are by other people, um, and, uh, what I thought was interesting about them was that they are not historical. So the Blackbeard story is historical, and there's a lot of other historical material in there. But then, the rest of them have this kind of magical element to them. They're just sort of fantastic in some way. Which I think is something that has a long association with pirates, even though, you know, curses and whatever. But I don't quite know where that comes from. Like, if someone could, could I mean, be, obviously by the time On Stranger Tides... Um, is out. It's a it's a well worn thing, but I think it was traditional for for there to be sort of like ghosty associations with pirate treasure in the story, but then for it to turn out not to have a supernatural element, like in Treasure Island. Um, so I don't know where that thing of making it actually supernatural comes from. Um, uh, but then, so there are these other stories, and then there'll be little text features about collecting pirate comics or you know pirate dime novels toy soldiers, trading cards, including some quite nice 19th century uh, or very early 20th century cigarette cards. I thought those were cool. Um, and then there are these weird little features like, so this one, the art is by Becker, and this is uh, how to make your own cat of nine tails. So, uh, you know, it shows you all the different knots that you might need and, and what to make it out of, and that will uh, help you and your little friends play games like Flogged Around the Fleet, which doesn't sound like a very fun game. Um, or, uh, for instance, this one, this is, this art's not by Becker, but this contains Anne Bonny, uh, paper dolls. So here you have Anne Bonny in her, you know, pantaloons with her cutlass, and then you can dress her up in, uh, you know, different sort of piratical outfits and accessories. Um, yeah, so, Anne Bonny paper dolls. So that's quite cool. Um, and another one contains a, uh, a beautiful little, uh, pirate alphabet that's, uh, you know, of, of sort of illustrated capitals that's free for non-commercial use. So that was neat, too. Um, now, these came out before... This is from the sort of the, the mid to late 1990s. So these came out before the Pirates of the Caribbean films came along and sort of reawakened the public interest in pirates as a genre. Because sort of in the early 20th century, in my mind anyway, pirates are understood to be a genre, like westerns. Um, you know... And uh, that genre kind of then went into abeyance for a while before it came back. 
Um, I think of Watchmen. There's the 1980, whatever it is, 1985. It's anyways, the mid 1990s, uh, ni 1980s, mid 1980s, and um, and in that, Alan Moore posits that in a world that where there are real superheroes, there wouldn't be superhero comic books because you know why would you have these fantastic stories about people that really exist? So instead, all comic books are about pirates. Um, but the gag there is sort of to do with the fact that there aren't comic books about pirates, really. Um, you know, uh, that the, the genre had kind of faded away. So at the time, this is sort of like a niche interest collector kind of thing, and then it comes roaring back. Um, and it got me to thinking about how historical periods kind of go in and out of fashion. So for instance, right now, at least in the world of historical fiction, we seem to be seeing a lot of stuff about Vikings and Anglo-Saxons in a way that, you know, 20 years ago, you really didn't. Um, or, uh, or certainly not as much. Um, or how knights have kind of gone out of fashion at the moment, right? Like, possibly Monty Python and the Holy Grail kills it, but that, that there was once a clearly defined genre of sort of tales of chivalry with knights rescuing maidens and questing and jousting and boasting and so on. Um, and we don't really have those at the moment. You know, maybe it's because pirates and Vikings both fit in with the kind of gritty deconstruction um, trend or, or, or something, I don't know. But yeah, you don't get a whole lot of knights these days. Um, in the same way that westerns kind of came and went and came and went uh, as a popular genre. Um, or for that matter, even the kind of like classic 1930s gangster movie, um, which I, I talked about the other day in my review of Hoodlum. And I wonder what it is that makes one genre you know, successful. I mean, maybe it's just the success of an individual piece followed by imitators. You know, maybe it's just um, uh, the people being aware of it for some historical reason, like it's the anniversary of something, brings it to people's minds. You know, maybe it's a uh, maybe it's it's what um, what those genres are seen as being associated with. So you know. But that's not doesn't seem always to directly tie into the history. So, for instance, I think most people understand the pirate genre as a genre of good, clean, swashbuckling fun. But you would be very hard pressed to think of actual piracy as good, clean fun, right? Um, you know. Uh, but then there are, there are, are some genres where the, the key is to explore the darker side of whatever it is, you know, even when that thing is not any more or less dark than the golden age of piracy, which is pretty dark. So I don't have a point about this historical fiction stuff. I just think it's interesting how particular historical periods sort of come and go. Um, in some cases, right back to the area that they come from, right? Like the, the, the sort of Western dime novel tradition uh, goes right back to the end of that era. And the same is true for sensational literature about pirates, which goes, you know, obviously all the way back to general history of the pirates, which is of that era. You know, it's it, that's sensational true crime writing, not sensational history writing. But in other cases, that's not as, I mean, obviously not the case with Vikings or Romans, you know. There used to be a lot of Roman movies in the 50s, then there were not for a while. Uh, and then, you know, Gladiator kind of brings it back a wee tiny bit. So what causes trends in, in popular historical fiction to come and go? Uh, I am not a literature, a literature guy, so I do not know. But I thought it was an interesting question to ask, and I thought I would ask it in the form of telling you about these comics that I like. Uh, okay, so that's all from me today. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Uh, if you have a theory about the origins of fashion changes in historical fiction, why not leave a comment here on the video or... Uh, over on the blog, um, and uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, until next time, then, thanks once again for watching. I'm James Holloway, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, hopefully my long absence from your screen will uh, is now at an end, and we'll have more stuff coming soon, so keep your eyes open. Thanks again, and bye.